<laughs> All right, so we're going to be testing the electrical project number three, which is the contactor, thermostat, transformer, and fan motor. All right, and to make sure it works before we do anything, you just go ahead and wrap it around here, and that should kick out the contactor through the thermostat because it just satisfied. Now look, don't touch anything because even though it looks like the fan is off, we set our AC volts and we're going to test it right here and I'm going to show you that even though it looks like it's off, you touch any of this stuff, it's live. It's got 120 volts. So don't just assume that there's no power to it because the fan motor's not running. What we do is we break the power to the other side. So you're going to test both L1, L2 and you're going to measure power with it satisfied and not satisfied. In other words, it's going to be calling for cooling here when the thermostat gets warmed up. And so now you're going to measure for power again on the back side. I also want you to measure, so we have a common terminal coming back from the transformer over here on this side of the coil. And I want you to measure across the thermostat. But be careful right here that it doesn't touch any other metal or ground and you're gonna measure both sides across the thermostat. Now I'm getting 24 volts because I got a difference in potential, but if I measure both of them on the same leg with the thermostat energized, it'll show zero voltage. But again, that's not true. There really is 24 volts flowing through there, but I don't have a difference in potential. If I wait till the thermostat satisfies, then I can measure it again, and we can measure the difference in potential because now we're reading through this coil and all the way back to the transformer on the one side and it will still show uh, it should still show 24 volts there it is 27 volts 24 27 the difference is is sometimes the transformers are wound for multiple voltages and uh, you might get 27 volts versus 24 but we still call it 24 volts 24 volt circuit yeah that's a dirty connector there and then the last thing I want to do with you is show you how to measure current so there's a magnetic field going through the wires for the fan motor and there's two types of current one type is when the motor starts up uh, and that's going to be our locked rotor amperage and we're going to set the meter on AC amps and uh, I know it's not going to be more than 20 but you could set it 220 doesn't matter you're going to clip it around the wire and then you're going to call oh the wire just popped out there that's a bad connection right here let's make sure to turn it off we're going to need to recrimp that wire on there Sammy and then you're gonna fix it up. I'm just gonna shove it in there for now. So it should still be calling for cooling, but that's a bad connection right there. So let's try it again. So you're reading now the amp draw going through the wire and it's a very small amount of amp. But what I was talking about with the, that's our running load amps after the motor starts up. The lock rotor amps is what it takes. I'll let that go down naturally. I'm not gonna touch it. That's a bad example for a teacher to show. You'll be sticking your fingers in there before you know it. Okay, so let's do the lock rotor amps now. It's completely at a standstill. You'll see it be a high number than 0.3. Uh, 0.4, that's a little bit better. Uh, it's not that bad. It's not. This one doesn't take that much force to start, but it doesn't have a lot of force. It's a low torque motor that's really just used for our evaporator fans. Uh, it's not for refrigeration, not designed for a air conditioning application. Um, they do use some of these for the gas furnaces and combustion motors. But uh, that's pretty much it. So you're going to measure the amp draw with the motor off. And then with the motor on, you're going to measure line voltage L1, L2, and then T1, T2, and then across the thermostat. And then one other check that we do is sometimes the contactor points get pitted and burnt, and they cause a little bit of uh, resistance through the coil. And there can't be any more than a 5% drop in the voltage across the points. So if I turn it back on, and I measure any difference in voltage here, then that means the points are bad. The contactor points either need to be cleaned. Honestly, we just replace them most of the time. We don't really clean them. They used to sand them and put a little cleaner on them, but now uh, they don't. So there's no difference in voltage between the contactor points, which is good. That's what you want to see. So that's how you're going to test the first project. And if everything works out right, you should get some readings. And then uh, that's pretty much it. Good job.